What's up YouTube? So today I want to talk about how to create effect sequences in SnapHeap. So what I'm going to explain today is kind of inspired by plugins like Looperator, Effectrix, Dblue Glitch, Infiltrator, and all those type of multi-effects sequence style plugins. So I want to show you a really cool trick to be able to do that in SnapHeap, but also to be able to make use of all of the really cool plugins that you can load up in SnapHeap. So without blabbering too much, let's dive in and have a look. I've just popped in a loop here from the Lictum sample pack from Sound Directive, which I have done. Um, I have looked at this pack in a previous stream. So it's a nice simple drum loop. And here I want to talk about a couple of ways in which we can create these loop sequencer style effects. So I want to just show you the simple concept and then we're going to break it down into a further more advanced kind of patches. So first thing I want to explain is creating the remap switch. So how this works is essentially what I want to do is first I'm going to create a macro which we're going to use to switch the switch. So let's just pop a remap over here. Let's put in a macro over here. And then what I want to do is I'm just going to nest this remap inside of a group, right? And then what I want to do is I actually want to use this as a kind of like input for the entire group. And then I'm going to create a bunch of other remaps, which is going to be linked to this one. So for example, for those who don't know how to create the switch, what you do is you're essentially creating a system which uh, in the first quadrant of the remap, it switches up like this. And then we duplicate the remap and we do this, et cetera, et cetera. So I have explained a very similar concept in both Vital and um, with my uh, kind of beat repeat style effect that I have done a video on recently. So if you do want to check more about this kind of thing, then definitely check out the link that I'm going to try and remember to post in the corner over here. Let's just edit this last one. So for now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a switch for four different effects. And then what we can do is we can kind of, um, this is the reason why I've kind of kept it inside a nested group. Um, let's just call this remap switch. Um, because it just makes it easier to expand this idea at a later stage. Let's add in a snap heap inside the snap heap. What we're going to do is we just gonna turn the mix down. Then what we can do is we can just duplicate this four times. And then each of these remaps is going to be linked to the mix um, of a corresponding snap heap. So this is still going to, it's not going to do anything yet because obviously we haven't loaded any effects inside snap heap. But this is where the kind of modular nature of uh, the kilohertz ecosystem really becomes powerful because we can literally just cycle through a bunch of the presets over here. We can create our own presets and, you know, we can really go wild with the kind of sound design capabilities uh, once we've kind of set up this uh, patch. So let's just check if this is working. If we turn this macro up, it switches those mixes. Nice and simple. So we can just put these all on a single channel because of the way that we've designed this mix system. They don't necessarily have to be on individual channels. So always keep that in mind. You can uh, expand this to four, eight, 16, however many snap heaps your CPU can take. <laughs> so essentially what we can do here is we can just start experimenting by loading up. I'm just gonna go through some factory presets here um, and just load up some of the interesting stuff that are that are here without even just thinking too much about it. We can just cycle through some of these, um, you know, once we're, uh, you know, once we've got the kind of full patch ready and 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 loaded. So here's where it gets interesting. What we could potentially do is set up a sequence to sequence this macro over here. So let's pop in an LFO. 
And what we can do is we can time this to a four over four, and then let's draw in some blocks like this. And then let's set this to modulate the macro. And then we have a, a sequenced effects generator. What I like to do is I like to put in a random as well. Let's say, for example, set this to a uh, one over eight, or should we do one over four? Uh, let's set this to unipolar. Uh, what we want to do is we want to set this to modulate this macro as well. And then we're going to create a macro that's going to modulate this one up and this one down. We can just turn that up. And then what's going to happen is we're going to be able to switch between sequenced and random. So let's just call this random amount and call this actual thing. So this is going to basically turn into a randomizer. And it's going to randomize the effects for us. Okay, so remember earlier on I said this idea, once you've kind of set up your patch, it's really easy to expand. So let me talk about how we would do that. Let's say for example, pop two on this channel, pop two on this channel, let's jump into these remaps and instead of dividing it by four, let's divide it by eight. So the first two lines, we will trigger the first snap heap. The second two lines, we'll trigger the next one and so on and so on. So then let's just edit this one as well. Number three, number four. And let's just keep duplicating these and editing them. Number five, number six, seven, and eight. And then what we can do is we can actually create the snap heaps and then change the modulation of each of these remaps to each corresponding snap heap. So let's do that again. Let's just go boom. So one thing is um, you can't lock the mix. Uh, Kilohertz people, if you're listening, it would be cool to be able to lock the mix so that you, you see the issue that I was having when you change the preset, the mix is determined by the preset and you can't actually lock it. It'd be really cool to be able to lock that parameter. I'm not sure if you can, maybe I'm missing it. Um, but it makes this idea of cycling through these presets a little bit more difficult, but we can just turn the, the mix down, doesn't matter. So anyway, let's do this, let's duplicate it. I'm actually gonna turn this down, four of these. So this one then modulates this mix, this one modulates this mix, and then the last one. So like I said, because we've now created this thing, the remap first, we don't have to then go and reassign all of those remaps. So it's a nice little thing, a way of being able to keep it all in a nice, uh, folder. So this should be able to expand the idea. Let's go in here and just choose a bunch of random things, set the preset and then turn down the mix. So it's a great way of being able to completely randomize a bunch of effects and to kind of inject complete uh, random inspiration into a loop, which might be, you know, rather dull. So with this type of thing, obviously, because it's pretty crazy on the CPU, I generally like to render it out. Um, so I'm just gonna give you a quick uh, idea of what um, it sounds like once it's kind of rendered in less glitchy vibes.
what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this preset, uh, both the four and the eight switch, and I'm going to upload it to my Patreon for all my five dollar supporters. So if you want to know what that's all about, check out the link in the description. And yes, that's about it for today. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Let me know what you think in the comments. As always, if you haven't yet, please consider hitting that like button and subscribing to my channel. See you guys next time. Cheers.